Is the news today for December 6, 2015. News you can certainly use and news that you can certainly be prepared about. Now, I want to tell you a few things here, folks. I gotta fix this light here. Gotta put another coin in the slot here. Well, gotta do it again. Coin in the slot mentality. All right, anyway, I would like to tell you a few things about what Pope Francis said in Friday's Global Summit Parrot Address Paris Address. Um, he made some very disturbing comments when he said this that those people who read the Bible or think that the Bible is a book of sacred writings, these are the people who we need to combat. And that's exactly what he said. These are the people we need to deal with, is what he was saying there. And I'm not taking his words out of context. This is just taken from a manuscript of what he actually said. And so that's very disturbing to hear that news. This is what came out of the Global Summit in Paris uh, Friday. Another thing he said is that Another thing that the Pope did when he went down later on in his speech, he went down and actually twisted scripture. You know how how Satan did with Adam and Eve in the garden. You know how we read the account of Adam and Eve being persuaded by the fruit of the tree of life by Satan. He twisted the scripture and said that all men who eat of this fruit that they were told not to eat from, from God, will know what God knows, basically. They'll know good and evil, and they'll know all like God knows all. Of course, that was a lie from hell. And, of course, Eve ate of the fruit and enticed her husband or influenced her him to do the same, and he probably did it because he didn't want to fall and lose her as his wife. So he went and jumped into and took up as honor for his wife, and that's probably what he did. That's why he did it, too. Um, so, you know, that's what's happening here with the Pope. He's taking the Scriptures and misusing uh, the Scriptures to make them mean something that is not exactly what it means. Like he's saying that all global warming or climate change is a result, all of it, which is a lie from the pits of hell, uh, that it's all caused in and all caused by mankind. Like mankind is the one that caused all this. Well, we probably caused a little bit of it, but I wouldn't say we caused all of it because that's scripture that's being twisted to mean something that it's not really saying there. Climate change, as we all know, has always happened throughout all history ever since the very beginning of this world. Climate change has always been going on for thousands of years. So to say that man caused it all, or to make any notion of thereof, is just papyrus, and it's absurd on its face, and it's just a hoax and a lie to say that man caused all climate change. I don't believe it, and no matter what they say, I still don't believe it. And you all need to be the same way because that's totally false information. And what they want, and the Pope even goes on further in his speech by saying, we want the churches to jump on board of all faiths and denominations to show that how we can help to help combat climate change because climate change seems to be more of a problem as the words being uttered from old bummer or bomb out or Satanist dictator, fascist, socialist, Muslim, kind of dictation there, uh, you know, because that's what he is. Um, you know, utters these words, well, uh, you know, climate change needs to be more of the problem than terrorism, when really terrorism is really the problem which was mostly manufactured by our government admitting that they have support ISIS. A lot of people forget that, but they did. And these jihadist groups, jihadist groups are part of that. The extremist Muslims, that is. Muslims that are extremists. Not all Muslims are extremists. Not all Muslims are bad. They all have Quran in it, and the Quran actually does say the same thing in there about cutting off the hand or foot or deporting someone. It does say that because they don't believe the same faith as they do. If they're not Muslim, that's what they do to you or kill you. Or if you fall away from them, you become Christian, you come back, then they kill you. Like we saw in the news where up in Chicago, a girl got killed because she left the Muslim faith and then she came back and they killed her because they raped her and killed her because she was a Christian and they knew it and then that's why they killed her because that's what it says in the Quran to do now were those people extremist Muslims or were they regular Muslims I don't know but if they really read the words of the Quran and they really believe the Quran that's what it teaches in there that's what it says in there remember we pointed that out to you in my sermons when I was talking about some of the differences between Muslims and Christians there, well, actually there's some there's actually a lot they're totally different so that's one of them you know, I mean, we, you know, Christians, 
when we follow Jesus' teaching, we don't teach to kill people who are outside the faith or rape their daughters or her wives. Like the Muslims, they teach that. They have one wife, but then they have multiple mistresses. And that's not biblical. That's from hell. I mean, you're only supposed to have one wife and no mistresses. But in Muslims, they believe they can be married and have sex with many women and even girls, too. They actually teach us in the Muslim faith. So for someone to say that Muslim and Christianity are the same, they are insane to say that because they're totally wrong. They're not the same on any face. So, you know, for to say that all Muslims are mean, too, is wrong because there are Muslims that are peaceful. And they do read the Quran, but they don't follow that. I've had friends that are like that. They're Christian Muslims that have converted to Christianity. So those people, they're not violent. They're actually part of the solution. But they've left their face, so therefore their death is upon their heads because they did that. But they found that their faith didn't make sense. That's what they told me. And they changed to Jesus because his faith made sense. Now, and I'll never forget this. As a preacher, it was really comforting to hear a Muslim say this. A converted one that became from Muslim to Christianity say this, that I never I never really felt like I was really going to be saved or be in heaven being under the Muslim way. But when I got to know Jesus and started reading the Bible, I realized it's a sure way, and that's through Jesus Christ, that I am 100% saved and 100% going to heaven. I don't have to pray to maybe get a chance to go there like what it said in my faith and it just was so comforting to hear a muslim friend of mine say that and he realizes that and it's just so wonderful see so not all muslims are bad because there are christian muslims out there too so we can't just say all of them are bad because they're not all bad but a lot of them are so there you go so that's our little in the news segment for sunday Uh, These are really disturbing things. We need to be in prayer for our churches and be in prayer for our country. We need to point out these things so our churches don't become more like the world, like warehouses for the world like they're becoming, how we we tolerate a lot of things that we shouldn't be tolerating, like homosexuality, uh, you know, uh, even some places where pedophilia is going on or predators are in the churches, you know, they're tolerating it when they should excommunicate that individual. Uh, you know, all these things. Uh, when people aren't practicing baptism or communion when they should be practicing that, uh, we don't need to tolerate this stuff. We should definitely talk about it and excommunicate people if they're doing these things if necessary because that goes against what God's Word teaches. Okay? So anybody comes in there and starts teaching something that's not biblical, then you need to talk to them first alone then bring two elders with you and a deacon and then bring and then put it before the church if it goes to that point, and that's when you talk about ex, excommunication. So the behavior is corrected, and that's what it tells us in Matthew, how to deal with sinners in the church. That's what it should say there, but that's really how it's supposed to do. But a lot of us aren't doing that in the churches. We're allowing these things to continue because we're worried about the money they give. It's a lot of money, and if they leave the church, we stand to lose that kind of money. It shouldn't be about the money. It should be about the souls that are in your body. That's more important than the money that you get in the plate for tithes. But instead, it's more about the tithe than it's about what person is doing in your body of Christ, in the church body. And it should be about that person. Their behavior is what's ruining the church body. What's going on by allowing it to continue to go on, unchecked, or talked about. And that's what's so disturbing, too. This is Michael DeSilvis, Christian Warrior for Christ, in the news. We'll, we'll send more to you. Keep it here. Please subscribe with us and please donate and send an investment to us. Become invested with us so we can grow and do more. See you later. Take care. Godspeed. Shalom.